sometimes these volumes make sense like in terms of the cover it makes sense with the story what is this <laughs> this is this volume is literally about bishamon and yata fighting the heavens like what what is this <laughs> Hiyori and Yukine like won't have a calm moment for a couple volumes yet and then only for like five minutes so sometimes it not, it's not thematically accurate but I love this fight so much because how Yato immediately goes to fight for Bishamon even though she's fighting against his dad which means he could die has always been a great character moment for him and seeing Takumi Kazuchi in battle is just always epic. If they kept doing the anime, I think this could have been like peak animation. Like it genuinely could have been excellent animation. But that's maybe why Bones was like, no thank you. <laughs> no thank you, I'm not interested in this. Right now they're doing My Hero Academia, I think. They have enough on their plate, but I'm vastly enjoying it. I don't feel like talking about it as much. Because I feel like I've talked enough about the first half of this series, but just wanted to say that this fight is maybe my favorite part of the whole so story the thing that noragami does so well is make like violent warrior gods actually be good people like both bishamon yato and takemikazuchi are all warrior gods they care so much about the land, the people, they care so much about their Shinki, like they're fighting. And you would think Takemikazuchi would be like a bitch to his Shinki just because he bullies Kiyun so much. Except he's like kind of petulant because he's supposed to hide that he got resurrected. Like there's a backstory to everything and I love it so much. And like when one of his Shinki is like, I'm sorry you you were injured he just comforts him and reassures him and it's like it's of no consequence nothing has ever cut through you before you've done well to withstand the blow of the blessed vessel you have my thanks like he's kind to him even though you would think he has the permission to actually be a bitch about it here like how could you lose against such a random god but he loves the battle but he still respects both the opponent and his own shinki he doesn't just want to throw them away and die <laughs> so it just manages very very well to make very violent personalities be such good people like it's not necessarily a bad thing <laughs> and how they have to master their god-given wish-given natures against what they want to and have to do it's it's just such a good, good, nuanced thing. Now, this story as a whole doesn't necessarily depend on the ending the way some other stories do because it has arcs. Now, obviously, they're going to defeat the crafter. That's kind of like a given. But how it actually ends doesn't matter that much because it's still arcs, all of it. And since it's gods and reincarnation and that kind of stuff, it can't really end end so it's a very odd story where it has the liberty of not depending entirely on the ending and to be honest i don't see this ending badly i it, there's not many ties <laughs> like not many loose threads to work with so i don't see this ending badly unless arachitoka do something very stupid but i genuinely can't predict an ending that would be hilariously disappointing because they just don't have that many loose threads to tie up my second favorite cover take it in because it's so nice my second favorite cover my favorite is as i think you might know i pulled it out like twice my favorite is volume 21 so far at least I don't know about the rest, but there's something so crisp about, like, this drawing and volume 21. It just looks like a work of art. Also, this one's actually thematically relevant, <laughs> unlike the last one. Some of them are very random, others are not, but, like, <laughs> I'm actually going to pull it out. Okay, the others are kind of relevant, but then there's this one, which, sure, like, she's 
thinking about stuff, but Hiyori on the floor in the rain, like she's thinking about Yato, so it is thematically relevant, but like, what is this? <laughs> what scene is this? Like, all of a sudden, it looks like the cover of a music video or something. I Some of them are very, very random, especially volume 16. I love Nana as a character too, but I, I'm not sure if that's in the volumes or if that's in the online chapters that aren't published yet. Nana is Arahabaki's Shinki, I think, and she goes back to him when Bishamon is out of, out of order. <laughs> and I love her so much. The fact that her and Kazuma, Bishamon, both Bishamon's Shinki, were so strong that they were like, God's secret. Who I was when I was human. Fuck that. Why would I care about that? <laughs> I love them both so much. <laughs> They're my favorite vessels outside of Kion. But <laughs> the fact that Nada was like, oh, so that's why you're using me. You think I'm disposable? Oh, thank God. Then I'm exactly the vessel that you want. It's better than being stuck in that box. Like, she's just so chill. And I love her. I love her so much. So many of these characters, I would pay good money. To see animated because they're so pretty and so cool <laughs> and so underrated. Taka's backstory is actually so sad because the fact that he couldn't like deal with his excess power with all the lightning that they don't let him use now and he started killing his Shinki to the point of them refusing to serve him and it said like it's a cruel thing that gods can't be killed by borderlines. I don't want to know how long it took them to kill him. They probably like stabbed him, lit him on fire. Or, like, I don't want to know what else they did. They probably stung him to death too. Although maybe not considering what they thought they were doing was right. But I don't want to know how long it took them to kill him. How much he actually suffered. And then he was reborn only for them. Obviously to make it safer for both them and him. They forbid him to use his lightning. Which is essentially like his power. And, like, apparently celestial gods, like the higher gods, not gods born from wishes alone or whatever, it's even worse when they reincarnate. That's why they hide the fact that he reincarnated. Which I'm not sure how they hid, <laughs> because I don't know how long he was a kid for, but Erisu is a kid for quite a while, so I'm not sure how they hid it. But that is irrelevant. I... They thrust all of that guilt on him of constantly fearing that he would, like, kill his Shinki even though he doesn't remember a thing. Like, so much guilt. He can't even use his power. He can't do the stuff he wants because they don't want him to go insane again. But it's just, it's supposed to be a rebirth, not just jail time for the child. Like, it's it's a sad backstory, but... What they did with him as a character is great because he could have just been, you know, like a random sad character that they fought with. But he joins their team, like with Tenjin and Ebisu, and he keeps showing up. He becomes a recurring character, as they would say in TV shows, after this fight. And I think that was a fantastic choice. Just adding someone so late in the story is rarely a good thing. In Noragami, it's a very good thing because... He's now fighting with Yato. They almost kill each other. In like two chapters, they're gonna organize a flash mob <laughs> for Yukita's birthday. It's, this series is so chaotic and I love it so much. Sorry, but how pretty is this? How pretty is this? Like this, this is exactly what I mean when I say pretty art. Like look at this. This would have been epic animated, like epic unparalleled. <laughs> Hello. Just had to do that, but imagine this animated. Like this shot, imagine that animated. Like the transition would be sick. Also, look at how pretty, pretty my boy is. The transition would be sick. <laughs> like you just know it. Everyone would be making edits of it. The atrocious manga is an outlet for Ada Chitoka to constantly be funny. And she mostly uses it on Take and Kiyun. <laughs> like, it's since they showed up, she's been using them in every atrocious manga. <laughs> but I nearly passed out the first time that I read the nicknames he was coming up with, especially when I reached Take Pipi. <laughs> Excuse me.
<laughs> Obviously, that probably means something different to Japanese, but Take Pipi, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> like, this is just like a masterpiece, a masterpiece of subtle comedy. Or maybe it isn't a masterpiece. It's just my masterpiece. Like, it's vibing with me perfectly in literally every way. I was going to say, like, this is my kind of third time reading it. I explained in the beginning, I think, that I read the first time I read it, like, where the show left off to the end. The second time I read it from volume seven to the end. This time I read it from the beginning. It's in the beginning, it isn't really indicative of how well done it actually is later. I feel like volume 15 to 25 is way better than the first 15. But also, like, the first 15 are excellent as well. Just a little bit different. Like, where I'm at right now, I almost can't believe how simple the plot used to be. Like, with all these godly fights and all these characters and all these stakes, I almost can't believe that 10 chapters, I mean, 10 volumes ago, we were, like, dealing with Ayakashi. Like, we haven't seen an Ayakashi in so long at this point. Wrong side. We're in the finish line now. I say that even though there's, like, <laughs> seven volumes staring at me from the bed but we're in the finish line now and I don't know if I'm gonna talk for a while about these because I don't know I feel like the more into a series I get the less stuff I have to say because it starts just getting intense like it's all battle scenes from now on and two two confessions I will definitely comment on that but aside from that it's just a lot of tension and a lot of battle scenes I will show you the covers though, but as I was laying out the covers, I noticed that volumes 21 onward are just straight up spoilers. So if you like go to a store and pick up, I don't know, the first volume, do not look at the covers of this manga past volume 20 because all of them are spoilers and very big ones, which I mean, obviously makes sense because no one would pick up like volume 25 of a series but they might see it accidentally and it might bother them as they're reading <laughs> so just don't look at them i have several things that i want to comment on first of all again hiyori an icon she's like okay i can't help yato nyukine i'm gonna go help bishamon we love a queen that knows her capabilities but also now the like trial the gambling trial i love that by the way i love the gambling trial but i love how take and kiyun are like now fully on yato's side he's like i hate your guts but i also know you're right and there's a validity to your claim so kiyun is considering stepping up and offering his head obviously daikaku will do it because that's just I'm sorry the cat's over there Daikaku will do it because that's just how the story works it kind of actually makes sense for Daikaku to be the one to do it but I just love this whole thing I love this whole thing because Amaterasu as a character has always been kind of mysterious especially since we see her like three times in the story but this whole trial is just such a cool aspect I don't know why but it's right around this time I think before like the fight with Take and Yato that the story actually gains so much emotional weight in my opinion at least because all of these characters have very very strong bonds at this point so much so that they're willing to offer the lives of their shinky for each other some of them even volunteer like both tenjin ebisu kiyun and daikoku are willing to lay their lives on the line or the lives of their shinky on the line just to save Yato and Yukine and I love that so much. I was never sure if in like this scene when Yukine is saying cough cough I can't breathe help me please dad I'm not sure if he's just having the flashback when his dad locked him up in the fridge or if he's calling out for Yato as his dad I feel like it's a combination of both. Apparently this is where Alechitoka switched to high quality watercolor paper and like you can tell. 
the details and the vibrant colors it just looks magical but yeah we're done with this now that the trials are done i think all that's left in like volumes 19 and 20 is organizing the birthday party for yukina which i love is a highlight because take and kyun are from now on going to be also the gag characters not just the serious characters but then all goes to hell <laughs> then it all goes to hell and then Yato Kazuma go after the father, Take, Ebisu, and Tenjin go after the crafter's name, and Hiyori just suffers. <laughs> so yeah, it's gonna be a fun five volumes. As soon as the happy family is reunited, you know everything's about to go to hell. Like, that's just how stories work, isn't it? Isn't that right? This is where my pr trouble with Yukine comes in, though. Because this entire scene, where he's comforting Yato, and he's like, I would still be in there if not for you. You helped anyone. You protected me. In exactly two volumes, <laughs> he will be with his father for quite a bit. And I feel like, yes, I get it. It's not the same as the first time, because it's the God's secret. And he's kind of broken by learning what happened to him when he died. And like 14 and 19 isn't the same really like one's a child the other's almost an adult so like Kazuma could handle it whereas Yukine couldn't but I feel like we re-established their relationship and the strength of their bond I mean he became his blessed vessel so many times that it just irritates me that it it regresses like that like he just becomes evil for the aesthetic <laughs> like obviously that isn't true but it feels like that. It feels like they just wanted an evil Yukine so we could have Yato with another vessel. It might not be true, but that is how it feels. I understand all the rationale behind why it happened, but the facts are that for the last five volumes, which is like, let's say 25 chapters, which is quite a bit, Yukine is just evil and suffering and Yato and Kazuma are kind of thriving together and seeing that contrast like this deep into the series is a little upsetting like to see how well Yato works with with a stronger Shinki a more grown-up Shinki is just kind of heartbreaking I guess to realize and he's gonna have to go through this with Yukine again and again and that from the beginning he has had to go through this with him again and again because he is a child so while it's all heartbreaking and I understand it that doesn't mean I like reading about it I just don't like rehashing the same the same kind of conflict of all the ridiculous things in this story I think the flash mob that they do for Yukine is un matched with how ridiculously good it is because <laughs> they're just gonna do a flash mob and like look at this hang on where i'm trying to look at this like look at take and cute i love how they joined without knowing what they're joining and then at the end of the flash mob they're like oh this was really a flash mob what are we doing here and that's just their introduction into the group they come and do the flash mob, don't know why they're doing the flash mob, and they're part of the group from now on. <laughs> I I love it so much. The only thing that's missing, obviously, is Bishamon and Kazuma, but they have other, other issues to deal with. This is just my favorite thing. My favorite thing in the whole, like, episodes between the serious stuff. It's just so chaotic, but also so cool. I would love to see that animated. I have many favorite shots of Take and Kiyun. I've used many of them on phone cases and as backgrounds. This is my favorite. This is my favorite because what is this? <laughs> like, what is this? <laughs> them just clapping along to the flash mob makes me laugh every, every goddamn time. <laughs> It just looks so ridiculous. I would genuinely pay good money to see this. Taki and Kiyun being so extra. I just, I want to get to the comment where they're like, what the hell? There we go. So what was the point of all this? I told you, it's just a group dance performance. 
See, I have to reiterate that I do not like like late additions to the cast. I never care for that because I'm like, I care about these people. You can't just insert yourself into this friendship group and expect me to care. But I feel like Take and Kiyun are the one exception, like the exception where they just might actually be my favorite pairing aside from the main three. I love how Take just thunders in breaks the entire house and he's like you may now backstab me <laughs> and Hiyori's just like well he has been coming by a lot but what exactly does he want <laughs> he wants friends and he wants company that's that's all like he's the celestial deity in his second lifetime like two thousand years old all he wants is some company <laughs> And I love him so much. I love him so much. Just the dramatic way that he's talking is everything. I'm just gonna be rambling about Take apparently. I'm sorry. But the fact that he's like, you don't let your shanky date, it's they can do whatever they like. And then Kiyun's like, for some reason romance is the one thing my lord has a reasonable opinion about. Where did he pick up these ideas? I don't know. <laughs> Considering that Kiyun is like arrow ace entirely. <laughs> I love them both so much. Two things. One, I love how despite not being interested in the slightest, Kiyun is known as like the master of love and the heartbreaker and Take is like, I've comforted so many of my Shinki because they've been jilted by you and Kiyun's just like, excuse me? <laughs> we, we love him. We love him. But the transition where where he is like, maybe he's right. Maybe you don't even realize when you're in love. The transition's just like perfect. Look at this. <laughs> to be fair, this is the last time that they see each other. This transition was the closest we got to a confession. Like when he leaves her, he almost kisses her. We're going to get a confession from both of them very soon, but not to each other because that's apparently never going to happen. I'm never going to see that happen. But <sighs> there's one thing to note, though. I will say it before or later because it just popped into my head. The difference between this translation and the fan translation is that the fan translation is sometimes more accurate to the story because I know that Yato's confession is a lot more direct on the fan translation because it's like I have someone I love too but in the manga I feel like they dialed it down quite a bit and it almost seems platonic the way that they wrote it so there's always a difference between fan translations and official translations because fan translators actually take into account the story and the characters and I very often prefer their versions. There's like a, a joke with Take and Kiyun later when Take comes back all ruffled from fighting with Yato and it's way funnier in the fan translations. The fuck you won't. The fuck you won't. You won't see each other for for the next 30 chapters at this point. It's a little painful being having caught up to the newest chapters and reading this because no, you won't see her again. <laughs> at least not for a very, very long, long time. So much more shit has to happen before the two of them see each other again. My promise of not letting this video run long has already gone to hell, hasn't it? It's fine. We know each other on this channel. But I have two things to say. One, this volume ends with Hiyori being sad about Yato being replaced. Now, two theories here. One, Yato is actually replaced. And that's how him and Hiyori stay together. And right when she's old, he's again old enough to get her as a Shinki. The only problem with this theory is that she's not going to remember anything that happened when she was alive. But she also might be a half-being of some sort, so she might remember. The second part of the theory is she will actually be his lifeline, which is, I think, something that everyone is expecting. But that's not what I wanted to comment on. It's atrocious manga. <laughs> Rakyun is sending Take just to bother Yato, and it's so funny. Takemikazuchi sama, I don't want to deal with you, so why don't you go find Yato and let him enjoy your company so I don't have to? Excellent thinking. I shall go pester him. Let's go, Kiyun. I don't think any of this is as funny as it is when reading it, but 
ever since Take and Kyun were introduced, Arachitoka used them in every single atrocious manga. They are just fuel for comedy. It's happened. The duo has been assembled. <laughs> I love them so much. Because they've actually been friends for such a long time and they have such an underrated bond too. Also the fact that Bishamon and Yato are now sharing a Shinki is cracking me up but they must not love it. They're just perfect. Like Kazuma and Yato are just the perfect bond because he's like I'm prepared to risk my life to kill the father. Yato's like me too. We're a perfect match. Let's go. <laughs> I love them. I'm at the point where Hiyori finds them and Kazuma sends her away telling her that gods cannot love mortals and that he tried it with Bishamon but it just was never enough for him. I do have a slight theory that the like the lesser the god the more human they are. It kind of falls into the water though with Take because he's supposed to be like a celestial god and he feels very human. But in terms of actual emotion, I feel like that's the case. Like, Yato was born from a single human's wish. Like, he can't get closer to humans if he tried. And I feel like he comes closest to feeling human. That's why he isn't, like, a creepy thousand-year-old. He actually behaves like a 20-year-old, even though he's very, very old. And I think that that mental state, that big difference between him and Bishamon, even, even though I would say she does love Kazuma quite a bit, is that he's not like the top echelon of god hierarchy. He's just like a single human's wish. And he feels so strongly for his Shinky too. I feel like he's the most human, which is why he actually does love Hiyori. I mean, we know this. Everyone else is telling her to not believe it, but we know this. We know this. <laughs> he will confirm it to Kazuma just like chapters after this, but Hiyori will get the lecture both from Kazuma and from Tangent <laughs> before she actually confesses it. I'm gonna try and like see. Yeah. I feel like this, the meme that fits this best is the one that's like Congratulations, you are officially the last to know. <laughs> the whole change itself is actually so heartbreaking because when he names Kazuma, I'm never going to call him Kazune because he is Kazuma. It's just so heartbreaking. Like he kisses the name that Bishamon gave him and he cries the first time that Yata uses him. It's just heartbreaking. It's a wonderful scene. Like it's a wonderful scene and I love the costume. Like I love how he's a scarf and the sword and the bow and arrow like it's so cool all of this would have made it a peak anime if bones actually decided to invest in it i know they have a lot of other crap to do among other things my favorite anime of all time but i still I, this would have been unmatched in terms of pretty animation maybe only by like uva they will this is exactly what I mean. Kazuma does say, I love you, Vina, in his sleep. However, when Yato's turn comes to confess, he's like, I haven't told this any to anyone either, but actually I have a crush too. And he's holding Hiyori's little copy per. In the fan translation, I know it says I haven't told this to anyone either. I have someone I love too. I feel like at this point, and because he's responding to Kazuma saying I love you, he would actually say, I have someone I love too. So why did they reduce it? Why did they say crush? It's not a crush. This is 20 volumes in. And we just got it from Hiyori. It only makes sense to mirror it with Yato by saying, I have someone I love too. That's what the fan translators did. And I agree with that so much more than this because it just doesn't make sense to call it a crush. This is just confirmation that nothing else can happen. Will you live and forget him or die and forget him? You're going to have to choose. There is no other option. <laughs> there is no other option and I don't see one. Unless Arachitoka like magically, I don't know, makes Hiyori or God or Yato somehow becomes human. I don't see them ending up together and it's upsetting. It is 
upsetting to just know that it can happen. Because then why would you make it in the first place? <laughs> there has to be some trick. There has to be some trick where she somehow becomes either an Ayakashi or a Shinki and remembers and then they're together forever. There has to be some way. No, but <laughs> the fact that Dairi Taket keeps diaries of laziness. <laughs> but I'm sorry. And what's funnier to me is this. I don't know if you can see it, but like there, Kyun, like with the shell there, he's like, I overslept. What's going on? <laughs> It's a running gag that Kyun just keeps sleeping through all of Taki's events. <laughs> like when Kazuma and Yato will be taste testing, taste testing. Taste testing. We'll just roll with it. Kazune's ability. <laughs> They'll just bully Taki and Kyun will be like, I overslept. Was your outing a relaxing one? And <laughs> Taki will just be fuming. This, there's just so much comedy in this. I, I love them so much. I'm going to take a break to eat now. It won't affect you in the slightest. My favorite, my favorite cover. My absolute favorite cover. The watercolor and just the whole outfit, like with the bow and arrow and the sword. I This just is beautiful to me. And it remains my favorite cover to this day. With the crows and everything. I love it. I love the way it looks. So I will now eat, then read some more. Also, just for reference, the only I pre-ordered volumes 23, 24, and 25. So the only ones that I haven't read physically are those three. So volumes 21 and 22 are actually the last ones I ever read without it being online. It's time. God's secret is eating away at Yukine. Also, this, I think this clip up there with Kyun Take, I think that was my background on my tablet for quite a while but I love how they're immediately like taking away their shanky like we are leaving <laughs> we are leaving right this instant the whole thing with the god's secret is actually very interesting because why are some shanky able to bear it but why are others not I think that needs to really be explored by the end and I think it will I mean the whole thing that broke Yukine was finding out about his life and like Hiyori is spending all that time with his sister and whatnot but I just love how immediately they react to it. They're like, we need to, we need to leave. Kiyun, get out. <laughs> I think it's time for the conversation on Yata's father. Now, there was no need to make him that attractive. No need. And I say this being attracted to Yata, Take, they are all very pretty. His father, though, <laughs> they made him insanely pretty. And I don't, what was the reason for that? Because if this was an anime, you just know he would have like a billion simps. And I would be one of them. Aesthetically. I hate his guts. <laughs> this is the first time we actually see his face. We've seen his hair so far, but this is kind of the first time we see his face. What was the reason? What was the reason? I think in the, in the last chapter, like 104 or 105, if I'm not sure. 103 we like he gets rid of the fujisaki body and he is fully the father my god why did you have to make him that pretty the last thing that we need in this generation in this time is more attractive villains like i've seen <laughs> people go batshit insane over Megumi's dad in Jujutsu Kaisen. This is unacceptable. <laughs> Why are all the dads just so attractive? It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing that every time he shows up, I can't think straight. The fact that Yata saw Take <laughs> and the minute Kazuma came back, he was like, I prefer practicing with human targets. <laughs> He's just gonna put a cone on his head and bully Takemi Kazuchi. <laughs> this is exactly my point. You can have a heartbreaking episode broken up by hilarity. I'm just sharing this with you because it's so much fun. 
how he's like bullying him and he's like i mean he's gonna make a great training partner involuntarily but how he's like pissed off because kiyone is there and then he transforms and everything and he's like where is kiyone sleeping my lord i can't i can't also i love it when like the authors sneak in the truth like yato is like it's good that Kion isn't here. That damned vessel is way way too overpowered anyway. Which is obviously the author is just saying that. I love it. These are the two funniest panels in existence. Like these. Here specifically is where the translation comes in. <laughs> the fact that Kion didn't realize <laughs> he even left. But here he says, are you going for a loose, fluffy wave look? It looks good for good on you. <laughs> and all the other Shinkir Scruffy in there, like, he deserves this. <laughs> but in the translation, it's like, was your outing a relaxing one? And it's just so much funnier because look at his face. It's so much funnier. And he says, was your outing a relaxing one? <laughs> After he was asleep, I... I think Kiyun might be the most relatable person in this story for me. If I was a Shinky, I would be Kiyun. <laughs> this is exactly my point. You have a serious scene where all the gods are discussing their Shinky's fate. And then <laughs> Kofuku just breaks and Tuck has like flip-flop breaks. A bird shits on his head and then half the building collapses on top of him. <laughs> I can't. I can't be serious. Like they're having a serious conversation. And then all of that just happens mid-conversation. Like the fact that they took a break to just show Yato pestering Take is hilarious to me. I will insert a picture. I don't think I can do this justice if I read it. So I will insert a picture. And I mean, what's the time? I'm thinking I'm going to read one more volume, then cut you off for today, and then tomorrow I only have the volumes that I actually never read physically. Again, look at this. Why so pretty? Why so pretty? What was the reason? I'm supposed to be heartbroken about Yukine defecting, and instead I get this. This was always my favorite bit because her grandma like lays it out straight. She's like, if you die, you're never going to see us again. That's a very good point. But when I think of being with the person I love most, it immediately he already has Yata and grandma who can notice everything is like, oh, is there someone like that in your life, Hiyori? I wish I could have met him. I'm sorry. This is no time for me to. This is exactly the time. It's time like these when you're most in tune with your true feelings. Go to him. Grandma on her deathbed is serving the fandom. And then you get something disgustingly bleak like Yukine at 14 being buried alive. That's why he's scared of the dark. He probably starved to death. He was buried alive. Like, they didn't have to make it that traumatizing. <laughs> This is also where the spoilers start, by the way. Like, this entire cover is a spoiler. But I'm done. We are done. Tomorrow we're going to read the remaining three and a half volumes. <sighs> I'm a little tired now. But the thing that I just find so funny about this is how you can have the most devastating thing happen at the end of a volume. And the author note will be, like, the randomest thing you've ever seen. Like, them commenting on food they ate last week. It's such a funny trend. I think, I don't remember if Suishida did that in Tokyo Ghoul, if he even had author comments at the end. But I know a lot of them do that. And it's like, you've just been traumatized. And then the author's like, I had ramen last week. I wonder if I should have steak tomorrow. <laughs> and you're like... Sir, you know what you just did to me. Or ma'am or whatever. You know what you just did to me. Pull yourself together. <laughs> so yeah, this is volume 22. We're going to be moving on to the other three. But I just want to prove to you how big, of, how big of a spoiler the other three are. Like, this is actually kind of harmless. 
this is not. <laughs> this is not harmless. This is a full on spoiler. <laughs> this isn't that big of a spoiler, but you definitely know what's going on in this chapter. This is this is the worst one. <laughs> this is the latest one. I find it really pretty, like the gray and everything. This is the worst offender. Like if you find this, <laughs> you will be traumatized. It is in fact a new day. It is time to finish these up. I've got my tea. Stewing. And we have our manga. So let's wrap this up. I know they use hair color just like as an aesthetic storytelling choice in manga, but like, come on. Don't tell me this screams teenager finally rebels. I mean, he died 30 years ago at 14 years old, so it does kind of make sense that he's only now in his rebellious stage. But there was no reason to give him that aesthetic. He looks awesome. Now he kind of matches Yato, actually, but there was absolutely no reason for the aesthetic change except a teenager rebellion. Like, you have all this serious stuff with, like, Yato and Yukire, like, they're struggling. And then you have these fuckers just researching how <laughs> Kofuku and Takemikazuchi are just so funny, so funny together. But he's like, wow, you're not much, just, you are more than just a muscle head. You might say that. <laughs> then like cut to Kiyun force feeding him articles where he's like, I care not for this drivel. I'm glad I followed the Kiyun system. And then you have the other god in the background, like she's mocking you, dude. It's just so funny. It's so funny. It's like school children. Like you could be just having the worst time of your life and it cuts to like a scene of the top tier gods just bickering, wearing suits. This show, this series is unexplainable. The disgustingly sad reality of Yukine spending 30 years in spirit form next to a mailbox waiting for his sister? Okay. I don't know why my mind didn't click on that last time. It just didn't. But and the fact that his sister thinks that they are his daughters, this whole thing is just so heartbreaking. I'm sorry. That's exactly my point. Like, shit is hitting the fan. The last four volumes of this series have not been the greatest fun. Have really not been the greatest fun. They're just heartbreaking. I have no idea if anyone's going to die at this point. And then all of a sudden you have something funny. I love how Take is so pissed when he realized that he actually kind of participated in the trial for Yato because he's like, you wish me to babysit the brat, the old man and the economy vampire. Why must I be saddled with this? Am I to be convinced by all of this? Oh, <laughs> uh, but he took part. He took part and he's like, I'm guessing they see you as an agitator. And then like the flashback to when he actually stopped Yato and everything. He is so pissed off by that. <laughs> But what's the other guy's name? I mean, he's, you know, what, what is his name? He's who, Daikoku, Dai, Daikokuten, I think is his name. I love how he's like, you know, I was there too. I was afraid to do anything, but watch, I'm still ashamed. Hold your head high, Takebikazu. On that day, you were on the side that was more right than the heavens. And he's like, thank you for that. But it, it was Yata. It was Yata's side. <laughs> he just cannot handle that. But now, Take and Ebisu will go to the grave. I think the latest that we see them, they're both at the grave. I have no idea what Tenjin and Kof could do. I, I have no idea. Apparently this is the 10 year anniversary. I mean, not when this came out, when the Japanese one came out, obviously. But the fact that for the 10 year anniversary, the one thing we got from Take and Kyun is Kyun antagonizing the crap out of him. He's like, the weather forecast is clear, so let me test something. I will insult you and let's see if you flare up. <laughs> You're not just bamboo. You haven't even sprouted. <laughs> and you just see, like, lightning everywhere. I I love them. I love them. Like, they've technically been proper characters for, like, what? 
six, maybe seven volumes at this point. Let's say seven. We've known them for seven volumes. And they're just such icons. <laughs> and we are finally up to the volumes that I've never read yet. This one, I distinctly remember, I ordered alongside Stormbringer last year, I think, or the year before that. No, last year. Definitely last year because the year before that I hadn't even read Noragami yet. So I ordered this and Stormbringer and it came right before I was due to go on holiday. So this is why I remember this. And this one obviously came like last month. <laughs> this this was a pre-order from like last month. So I've not touched these except to like flip through them. This will be the first time I'm actually reading them and I'm quite excited. This is exactly my point. Look at this. Like, look at how Kazuma is protecting Yato, even though he's about to find out the God's secret. He'll be like, I don't care about any of that. I love Vishamon. Fuck you. How am I not supposed to prefer him? Like, Yuki is going through all his teenager bullshit. And yes, again, don't get me wrong. I know how he died was painful. But so did Yukine. So did Nana. Like, how are some of them able to get over it? And some of them are not. Like, how does Take know that Kyun won't be able to get over it? How do they, some of them get over it as some of them don't? I would like a pattern to feel better about Yukine. Because the only reason that I can find is to have actual conflict with Yukine. That's the one reason that I can find. Like, it wasn't a problem for Cosmo for two seconds. I guess if they love something on the far shore enough to risk their life, that's what Nana did too, then the God Seeker won't do anything to them anymore. But we already know that Yukine risked his life for Yata and he became a blessed vessel. So like, where is the line drawn? But also just the random detail of him having earplugs is so funny. Because it's like, he's telling Cosmo, like, we're bonded by friendship. What? Never mind, put your earplugs back in. Again, there's comedy in the middle of a battle scene. This doesn't work often, but it does work here. Like, it really works here. I love how Take is a warrior god, so he's, like, bored out of his mind just rowing now that he's, like, alone with Ebisu. But then he's like, allow me to recite the poetry, and he starts reciting it, and he remembers when Kiyun praised him, and he's like, oh... I was made to recite the collection from memory. My education is showing. Like, he's so excited that the stuff that Kiyun taught him is actually useful now because he's a warrior god. And he's like, if I don't have an ass to kick, like, I feel very, very bored. But now he's like, am I smart as well? I love him. I love him so much. I realized that this entire thing has actually just... <laughs> <laughs> has just turned into a Taki and Kiyun fan account. But I'm sorry. You had to memorize poems, that can be because, but that's elementary school stuff. As it should be. It was very, I was very young. The fact of my replacement is meant to be a secret. <laughs> and he just shuts up. I see your predecessor scoffing at me beyond the mist. I mean, Evers is the last person who should judge. He has been reincarnated like a billion times. <laughs> But I love how he accidentally just revealed that he was reincarnated. I love him. We are up to the last volume. After this, I will only have like volume 26 and then, I don't know, like two chapters. So for volume 26, I'm going to hold up a picture or I'm going to insert like a mini break with just clips that I want to show because obviously I can't show the online ones to you. Maybe I can though. I'm going to read it on my tablet so maybe I can, you know, like hold it up and stuff. But we're almost done. We're almost done. That's the thing. When it's just fight scenes, it's, it's very quick. Now I will say one thing because last night I read like five volumes and today I only have four left. I mean, two now, but this feels a lot longer than it I think actually is like it's a weird that's what I said the first time I saw it on my Goodreads the pacing is very odd in this because like the first 15 volumes feel quicker than the last five feel because it's all battle scenes 
but 25 volumes is still a lot so like a lot has happened but at the same time you can kind of sum it all up like if you sum up the first two seasons of the show which is practically like the first seven volumes of the manga there's not much else you have to explain about the manga like there was the trip to yomi after that it was the fight with take the trial and then this is happening like there's not that many huge events which is why i think this series is in at danger of ending poorly because i feel like there's not that many threads that they have to actually tie up <laughs> i love how when little episode stumbles that can be because she's like isn't it time you bought the rippy strippy kind <laughs> I love him. I love him. And then he's like, that's not the problem. You have your people do your hair for you. I did it myself today. It's like two lords bickering. It's so funny. The fact that he came to bond with Izanami because she was so bored. <laughs> I love also, yes, he is hilariously pretty. We've established this. But did you really have to make the main villain? A guy who wants to destroy the world because his wife died? That's the best trope in existence. Like, think Dracula from Castlevania. I will never be against these villains. Like, to be fair, we've known that it was because he lost his wife for a long time now. But now that you hear he's waging war literally just because his wife died on a landslide or whatever... They made him pretty and sympathetic, despite all the crap that he put Hiyori Yato and Yukina and Kazuma through. <laughs> it was a mean move. And there it is. There it is. Yuki has learned his real name and fallen into Yato's arm once again, answering to his name. Obviously, shit kind of hits the fan from here because Kazuma, Kazuma gets injured and Bishamon comes back and there's trouble. And he already gets her lifeline cut. We will get to that in a minute. But this is it. This is it for the volumes. And what a way to end it. Like, <sighs> this video is going to be 30 minutes. 30 minutes too long, isn't it? The gods dealing with COVID is the funniest thing I've ever seen because it's like, like Takis, Shinky made him a handmade cloth mask and everything. And they're like, the gods have been, the Takamagahara is in lockdown. And he's like, I look at this shopping list, but it makes no sense. Softener, pray tell, what are we softening? <laughs> and Tangent is like, we're struggling with our day to day because we usually re let Shinky run our household. I, I would like a, a whole episode about them actually struggling. It's so funny. And Ebisu is like, I want to stock up and resell it. I mean, he is the god of the economy. I'm sorry, but it's so funny how Tuck is like, softener, what are we softening? This is the last we see of Hiyori. Like, I'm not sure if you can see it on the screen. This, like when she collapses because her cord was cut. I think that's the last we see of Hiyori. We still don't know who did it. It was probably the father, but also how would he be able to teleport that quickly? So who cut her cord? Who cut her cord? And also the last thing it says is if the cord is cut, she can never return to the world of the living. Is Hiyori going to be dead now? I'm. Are they going to win the fight because she becomes Yata's Shinki? I don't know. I don't know. I, this is why my anxiety is growing. <laughs> Like, Volume 25 in Japan came out, like, almost a year ago. Because when you look at the chapters after Chapter 99, there's, like, 10 of them. And there have sometimes been months where Arashijoka haven't published. Like, so let's say a year has gone by since Volume 25. I am stressed. I am stressed. And I've been keeping up with this monthly for two years now. A bit less, like the end of 2021, so year, a year and a half, let's say, I've been keeping up with the monthly releases. It's stressful. Like, you only really take in the gravity of everything when you read it like this all at once, because monthly you're kind of, like, detached. Like, you don't really remember that well what happened last month, but this way. And the fact that it literally says it's the final arc is stressing me out a little. Obviously, this is this vlog, I will hopefully put it out before the new chapter comes out, but 
I'm stressed. I have a dangerous suspicion this is all heading for Yato's death because <laughs> now that I really would love you, love for you to see this. Yeah, Take and obviously this might be my favorite shot of them together. They are the last ones who know his name. All the humans are dead, so the crafter can't come back. So the one way that Yato can come back if he is resurrected by Hiyori, but Hiyori is currently almost dead. <laughs> So there's just one path before us now because the crafter is going to die. We've confirmed this. There is no lifeline for him. He's going to be stuck in Izanami now. I mean, in... No, Izanami is the person. Yomi. Yomi, I think, is hell over there. Which means that if Hiyori dies, Yato is screwed. <laughs> but Hiyori probably won't die, so Yato will come back and Yukina will raise Yato. Which means, again, they can't be together. But she is going to be his lifeline, and maybe his her bloodline would, will be his lifeline. But that does that mean he's just going to take her as a grandma and make her his shinky, even though she won't remember shit? I think the only way to make this a happy ending is if the god's secret is somehow overridden. Like, all the shinky can find out that they died, but there's a way for them to handle it. Because that way, when he already dies, Yato can be with her. That's the one way that I see this happening, but... <laughs> I don't think this is going to be a completely happy ending, to be honest. Even though the series is so lighthearted, I feel like this won't be such a clean, happy ending. But maybe since I'm expecting that, I'll be happily surprised. Obviously, Kazuma isn't Yata's. I know this. So he had to come back to Bishimon. But the fact that he was like, I'm not dying. I refuse to succumb to knowing my name because I love my newfound family so much. He's literally like, I'll see you one day. Like, he abandons his real family for Bishamon. Like, this is this is precious, okay? This is precious. <laughs> I love them so much. And that's how he lives. Except he's out of out of the battle now, so <laughs> what the hell is Yato gonna do? Excuse me. Like, I know you can't see this that great. I'm trying, but excuse me. Like, the last two chapters, like 104, 105, when he finally has his true form, I feel ashamed. I really do feel ashamed that I find him so attractive. But it's their fault. It's their fault they knew what they were doing when they did this. They knew. That is it. That is it. I have finished it. The last chapter was published the 6th of February. So I am done <laughs> with Origami for now, obviously. Now, just a rundown of the ending. The dad did something that's kind of like a reality marble, if you know from fate. <laughs> it's kind of like a reality marble. Like he's pulled... Yato and Mizuchi and Hiyori and everyone who was in that area into a reality marble. But the one thing that always interested me is Hiyori says she's seen it before. What do you mean you've seen it before? I forgot about that. That was the last thing we find out that she's seen this reality marble before. And I'm like, what kind of mystery is brewing here? Like, obviously, this is very intense now, and this isn't a complete vlog because. The story is still ongoing. I cannot give you my full thoughts on this series because this series isn't done yet. But basically, where we are at right now, Dai Kokuten and the two gods with him, they reincarnated. Take and Ebisu are the last ones who know his name, but he has another lifeline, Fujisaki. But since they know his name, maybe they can do something with it. So that's their front Hiyori is kind of on the verge of death <laughs> but she's been taken in by this reality marvel and she apparently has seen it before then we have Kazuma and Bishamon kind of out of the fight because Bishamon is still healing and Kazuma is also on the verge of death only saved by his love for his newfound family then we have the father Mizuchi and Yato Yato is on the verge of death the father kind of isn't on the verge of death because he has loopholes and stuff. Mizuchi is also very injured and Yato is probably going to get Yukine to fight with him in the next fight. Even though they're now all in the reality marble, Amaterasu has just 
fucked off. <laughs> she has left the battle scene entirely. The town is on fire. Everything is kind of crap right now. <laughs> Everything is kind of crap right now. And I think that's it. I think that's everything I need to remember going forward. So yeah, that is the ending. If you've caught up till now, that is the ending. We are now patiently waiting for next month. And I will now give you my final thoughts and close out this endless vlog. It's just started raining. I finished the series, obviously, via the tablet. So I'm just going to hold these up. I finished the series and this remains one of my favorites. This is the first time I've completely read through it, but I've technically read it three times. So we can say that this was my third time reading through the entirety of Noragami. Now, I would recommend this series if you're looking for something very lighthearted, very fun, very beautifully drawn. I have to highlight that. Their art style is phenomenal, especially when it comes to the art scenes and everything. The fight scenes. The fight scenes. This deserves to be animated. This would have been a peak anime if they actually bothered to do the rest of it. I feel like they cut off right when it gets really, really good and not like just a teenage drama when all the characters actually have stakes and actually have things to do. They cut off right before that actually gets started. And yes, it does cut down on the teenage drama. I feel like that was only really present in the beginning. But this is a phenomenal series. It's not my favorite of all time. <laughs> it's not my favorite of all time because I feel like it does lack just a little something for me. Like it's not as deep maybe as I would like it to be or as deep to me personally as I would like it to be. But it's so much fun. It's beautiful. There are so many characters I love and care about. So, so many. It's stupidly funny at times and it also feels like it's high stakes while also managing not to be high stakes. I guess that's the best way that I can actually describe this. I will actually mark the outro in the video, so maybe you can just watch the outro. Hi, hello, I'm sorry you had to suffer through an hour and a half of this. But yeah, this is all I have to say about Noragami. I think I've talked enough in this video. I love these kinds of long vlogs where I can talk about spoilers and specific scenes and discuss certain themes. So I'm happy that I did it. I'm very happy that I did it. The only other manga that I did it for was Attack on Titan and I am happy that I made that vlog because I don't think I'll ever care about it like that again. So I am happy that I have it even if it's just for me. So if anyone is still here, I hope we had fun. <laughs> Good luck to us now in March when the new chapter comes out and let me know your theories on why Hiri has seen the reality marble before. Let me know if you have theories on how this thing is going to end. And in any case, who's your favorite character? As much as I love the main three, I think my favorites might actually be Take and Kiyun. I've read this three times and this has kind of been confirmed, I think. I love them. I love them to bits. So I will see you in the next video.